So I get lots of emails and questions about how to incorporate the diminished sound into our blues playing. Now we're gonna play a blues in G and you're gonna hear me play a whole solo over 12 bars where we're gonna incorporate this sound. Okay, but that's gotta come from somewhere so we have a little bit of knowledge and we can't just go willy-nilly throwing it anywhere. So if we're playing a blues in G, lots of times we'll be using a G7 arpeggio to achieve some fun, you know, bluesy sounds. Right? Now what we're gonna do is just take one note of that, the root note, move it up a half step, and play all the same notes we already know. So we're essentially altering that G7 chord, and that's really cool because what we're gonna do and talk about is how that alteration of that chord works really well when we change to a chord that's upcoming in the piece and in the 12 bar blues. So I'm gonna play a solo and you guys can get the tab and the track in the links below. And if you don't know those dominant seven arpeggios, they're all in my ebook, the Arpeggio Handbook for Blues Guitar. It's on sale for 40% off in the links below. Be sure to check that out. All right, let's hear me play the solo, use some diminished sounds, and then we'll break all the concepts down. Let's do it. So a fun little 12 bar solo there. Again, it's all tabbed out for you guys. Make sure you grab that. And I did do the diminished seven arpeggio in there as well. And what we really wanna focus on is measure four going to measure five and how we altered this by one note. Okay, just by raising that root note. We're gonna get into that, but let's talk a little bit about why we're doing that. If we're in the key of G, the five chord in the key of G is the D7. And we can call that a functioning dominant. It wants a pull back. It has a function. It wants to resolve to one. And we can also alter the five chord. The five chord is extremely altered <laughs> in music. That means we can do things like make it a sharp nine or a flat nine. And you can hear how that sounds really nice leading back to the one chord. Now that functioning dominant relationship can happen in music all over the place. It doesn't have to be just the five of a, of a chord going back to the one in one particular key. It can happen in relationship you know, you know, circumstances. So when I play the G7, so a G7, we'll call it the five of, oh, I don't know, C, because the relationship from G to C in the key of C, for instance, that G chord is the five of C. So we're kind of like superimposing that for a moment and saying, ah, oh, it's the five of the next chord it's going to. Even though that's a C7, the relationship and the distance is still the same. So we can sort of superimpose and force those fun tones like a flat nine out of our G7 arpeggio. Here's G7, flat nine. Hear the difference? Now it starts to have that jazzier diminished quality going to the four chord. So for the bars leading up to that, three, four. So we're gonna play that arpeggio in the fourth bar. That G diminished seven, that flat nine sound. You can hear it pulls right to the C9. That functioning dominant wants a pull to some sort of resolution, okay? And that's what it does. And once it's there, we gotta do something. Maybe we'll play minor pentatonic. Maybe we'll play um, a C7 arpeggio. There's the, the diminished seven. Maybe we'll play a uh, C7 arpeggio. That'll work well as, also. And I kind of do that in the solo. Pick that apart and you can hear what I do. I'm outlining that dominant seven arpeggio there. 
But most importantly, we're focusing on that diminished seven sound, that flat nine sound, okay? Think about those being the same thing. Now, once we kind of do all that, we can continue to play blues like we like to play. But we're gonna get to a D7 chord, or D9. What we have here, a five going back to the one. And we can come up with another type of fingering that'll help us achieve that functioning dominant going back to the one. So that one's a little harder to find, but I wrote it out for you. So we're gonna start on the third there, F sharp, A, C, D sharp, remember half step away. And we walk right back into the root. And then play whatever kind of G blues thing you want from there. Even when I play a D7 flat nine, it links right up. So those are two options that we can explore. And this is so important. This is the more holistic approach. There's a lot that could be said about what happens in that functioning dominant you know, movement from the five to the one. There's so many things you can play. That's what makes playing over dominant chords so exciting is that there's tons and tons of tones. There's altered scales. There's all different kinds of things we can do, okay? But this is a way to get a, you know, dip a toe in the water, get, get start, start to get the sound in your head. I heard Robin Ford say once about, you have to hear it. If you don't hear it, then you're not going to be able to play it. So if you just take that, and you start to hear it and you start to see it and relate it to something on the guitar, you're going to be in good shape. You can take that arpeggio since it's symmetrical, you can move it up every three frets, but instead of doing that, try to say, oh, that's a chord tone, that's a B. If I play it off of the B, that's gonna work. If I play it off of the D, it's going to work, and off of the F. The trick there is you always wanna have something that you're leapfrogging to, the next the next lick from a pentatonic scale, the next arpeggio that lines up with the next chord coming in the sequence. So you don't wanna get, you know, sort of jumping off a cliff with no parachute, essentially, or no, jumping out of a plane with no chute, yeah. Okay, so make sure that you really understand it in this one position and connect it to the blues just in that little situation there of two measures. It's gonna help a lot. You don't even have to worry about the five to the one if you don't want to. Okay, whatever works for you is really, really important. Now, like I said, you can grab the tab, grab the track, get the sale link for the ebook, 40% off of that. It's gonna teach you dominant seven arpeggios all over the guitar. It's gonna give you practice methods and it's interactive with links, so you can check that out. And I love teaching little pieces like this because I think it's just way more digestible than to try to show you how much I know with my theory knowledge and confuse you. I wanna get you guys out there running on the track catching fish, then we'll teach you how you caught the fish later. But get the sounds, have fun, and if this video was super helpful, I'd love it if you guys subscribe to the channel so you know when I put out new stuff, I'm doing it all the time, lessons, gear-related videos, we have a lot of fun here. I'd love for you to be a part of it. Leave me a comment, tell me what you love, tell me what you don't like, tell me what you wanna see, let's chat about it, and we'll hang out next time on the video. All right guys, I'll see you then.